Good afternoon, dear students of IT6208, System Integration and Architecture 1. I am your OLC, Ms. Karen Delara, and welcome to our virtual class today. We will be discussing the following, what is structured analysis, attributes of structured analysis, tools for structured analysis, data flow diagrams, data dictionary, decision trees, decision tables, structured English, and pseudocode. What is structured analysis? Structured analysis is a development method that allows the analyst to understand the system and its activities in a logical way. It is a systematic approach which uses graphical tools that analyze and refine the objectives of an existing system and develop a new system specification, which can be easily understandable by user. Attributes of structured analysis are, it is graphic, which specifies the presentation of application. It divides the processes so that it gives a clear picture of system flow. It is logical rather than physical. The elements of system do not depend on vendor or hardware. It is an approach that works from high level overviews to lower level details. Tools for structured analysis. During structured analysis, various tools and techniques are used for system development. So these are data flow diagrams, data dictionary, decision trees, decision tables, structured English and pseudocode. Let us first discuss the concept of data flow diagram, DFD or bubble chart. It is a technique developed by Larry Constantine to express the requirements of system in a graphical form. It shows the flow of data between various functions of system and specifies how the current system is implemented. It is an initial stage of design phase that functionally divides the requirement specifications down to the lowest level of detail. Its graphical nature makes it a good communication tool between user and analyst or analyst and system designer. It gives an overview of what data system processes, what transformations are performed, what data are stored, what results are produced, and where they flow. Basic elements of data flow diagram or DFD. DFD is easy to understand and quite effective when the required design is not clear and the user wants a notational language for communication. However, it requires a large number of iterations for obtaining the most accurate and complete solution. So these are the basic symbols of data flow diagram. So we have square or the source or destination of data, arrow, which means data flow, circle, process transforming data flow, open rectangle, which is the data store or the database. Types of DFD. DFDs are of two types, the physical DFD and the logical DFD. The following table lists the points that differentiate a physical DFD from a logical DFD. Physical DFD, it is implementation dependent. It shows which functions are performed. It also provides low level details of hardware, software, files, and people. It depicts how the current system operates and how a system will be implemented. Logical DFD, it is implementation independent. It focuses only on the flow of data between processes. It explains events of systems and data required by each event. It shows how business operates, not how the system can be implemented. Next, let's proceed with the context diagram. A context diagram helps in understanding the entire system by one DFD, which gives the overview of a system. It starts with mentioning major processes with little details and then goes on to giving more details of the processes with a top-down approach. Next, we have the data dictionary. A data dictionary is a structured repository of data elements in the system. 
it stores the descriptions of all DFD data elements, that is details and definition of data flows, data stores, data stored in data stores, and the processes. A data dictionary improves the communication between the analyst and the user. It plays an important role in building a database. Most database management system or DBMS have a data dictionary as a standard feature. So this is an example of a data dictionary. So we have four columns. We have the serial number, data name, description, and the number of characters. For number one, we have ISBN or ISBN name with 10 characters. Two, we have title with 60 characters. Number three, we have sub or the book subjects, which have uh, 80 characters. And number four, we have a name or the author name, which has uh, 15 characters. Next, we have the decision trees. Decision trees are a method for defining complex relationships by describing decisions and avoiding the problems in communication. A decision tree is a diagram that shows alternative actions and conditions within horizontal tree framework. Thus, it depicts which conditions to consider first, second, and so on. Decision trees depict the relationship of each condition and their permissible actions. A square node indicates an action and a circle indicates a condition. It forces analysts to consider the sequence of decisions and identifies the actual decision that must be made. Next, we have the decision tables. Decision tables are a method of describing the complex logical relationship in a precise manner, which is easily understandable. It is useful in situations where the resulting actions depend on the occurrence of one or several combinations of independent conditions. It is a matrix containing row or columns for defining a problem and the actions. So these are the different components of a decision table. First, we have the conditions tab. It is in the upper left quadrant, which lists all the conditions to be checked. Two, action stub. It is in the lower left quadrant, which outlines all the action to be carried out to meet such condition. Number three, the condition entry. It is in upper right quadrant, which provides answers to questions as in condition stub quadrant. Four, the action entry. It is in lower right quadrant, which indicates the appropriate action resulting from the answers to the conditions in the condition entry quadrant. The entries in decision table are given by decision rules, which define the relationships between combinations of conditions and courses of action. In rule section, Y shows the existence of a condition and represents the condition which is not satisfied a blank against action states, it is to be ignored. X or a check mark will do against action states, it is to be carried out. Next, we have the structured English. Structured English is derived from structured programming language, which gives more understandable and precise description of process. It is based on procedural logic that uses construction and imperative sentences designed to perform operation for action. It is best used when sequences and loops in a program must be considered and the problem needs sequences of actions with decisions. It does not have strict syntax rule. It expresses all logic in terms of sequential decision structures and iterations. So example of a structured English. If customer pays advance, then give 5% discount. Else if purchase amount is greater than equal to 10,000, then if the customer is a regular customer, then give 5% discount. Else no discount. And if 
else no discount and if and if next we have the pseudocode a pseudocode does not conform to any programming language and expresses logic in plain english it may specify the physical programming logic without actual coding during and after the physical design it is used in conjunction with structured programming it replaces the flowcharts of a program Next, let's proceed with the guidelines for selecting appropriate tools. So use the following guidelines for selecting the most appropriate tool that would suit your requirements. Use data flow diagram or DFD at high or low level analysis for providing good system documentations. Use data dictionary to simplify the structure for meeting the data requirement of the system. Use structured English if there are many loops and actions are complex. Use decision tables when there are a large number of conditions to check and logic is complex. Use decision trees when sequencing of conditions is important and if there are few conditions to be tested. So if you have any questions, please send a message through the LMS chat box, or you can also email me at kvdalara at amaes.edu.ph. Thank you for listening, and thank you for attending our virtual class today.